Hi, I'm Ernie Zor, and on behalf of Pure to Spring Software, I welcome you to the 12th in our series of Frequently Asked Question videos. Even though I'll be using the child support application here, this video is relevant to all of our applications and all our users because, heck, who doesn't print forms? If you've ever used a tax app, you may have noticed that most aren't able to print forms. I know, you're saying to yourself, of course they print forms, that's mainly what they're used for. Yes, but in truth, an application like TurboTax sends its forms to Adobe and the user actually prints forms using Adobe, not TurboTax. The whole process is relatively transparent to the user and is just part of the process of previewing forms before printing. Sending forms to the word processor is something our applications have done for years. However, with all our latest versions, it's been the only way to print, and there are some big advantages. The point is that this video applies to old and new apps. That would be preview or print command in the new apps and the send to word processor command in the older ones. Here's the advantages. The first advantage is faster printing. You'll like that the new preview print command prints considerably faster than the old print command, sometimes by a factor of 10. The more pages you're printing, the greater the gain in speed. The second advantage is making PDF files. When forms are previewed in my word processor, I can save my worksheet as a PDF file. I could attach it to an email and send it to my client with instructions to review it, print it, sign it, and bring it to court with you the next morning. If you've never created a PDF before, I'll show you how easy it is. I've got the child support application up here. Let's just pretend I was going to um, make a PDF of this blank worksheet, pretend it was filled out. There it is. It's, you, you can see it now. Uh, actually, uh, it's in WordPad. I don't know if WordPad has the ability to save this as a PDF file. It does not. What I'm going to do is very quickly go back to the program and tell it to force Word. Now we should see it in Word. Let's print it. There we go. And now to save it as a Word process, uh, save it as a PDF file, I'll click on Save As. And here it is right here. I'll move this into the center of the screen so you can see it real good. Um, save As File Type when I clicked on Save As. And now I'll pull that down and you'll see that PDF file's right in there. So when I save this file, I would give it normally a, a name that meant something instead of this tem temporary name. But the point is that whatever name I do give it, it's going to save it as a PDF file when I click on the Save button. And that's, that's the way that works. It's pretty easy, actually. Now, let's go on to the third advantage of sending uh, or printing or previewing like that in the word processor and that's special printing. When I'm using my word processor to preview and print, I'm able to access the most advanced capabilities my printer has to offer and that often includes duplex and tumble printing and more. It won't do any good to fancy print in this video but I can show you where you can access these capabilities. While we're still in Word, I'll go down to print Let's bring up the print dialog, and here's where you can go into properties over here, and that'll bring up a whole thing. Now, my uh, unfortunately, my printer doesn't have uh, duplexing capabilities except manually where you would reinsert the paper in the tray uh, to, to print the second side. Uh, but if my printer did have those capabilities, and whatever capabilities it does have, it would be accessible through here. I'll cancel out of that and let's go on. The fourth advantage is footnoting. You want to place a note in the margin of the worksheet to explain something that's not directly provided for in the statutory worksheet? Well, once I'm previewing my worksheet in my word processor, any type of editing and formatting is possible. I can show you that as well. Let's go to here and, and I'm going to put a, an asterisk behind gross receipts. Asterisk. There we go. And at the bottom here, I'll put uh, what's I control Z'd my way out of that. I didn't want it to get too fancy with the bullet. And I'll just say gross receipts will be provided at a later date. Okay, just an example. 
Anyway, those are all the advantages, and there's probably more. I'm just not going over them or not thinking of them right now. But when something goes wrong, you'll typically get an error like the specified file was not found. Now, the error you receive may be different, and in rare instances, you may get no error at all. The bottom line is the desired form doesn't open in your word processor. What's supposed to happen is this, the app, in this case the child support application, it creates a document file in an RTF format and it sends Windows, the operating system, a command to start your word processor and open the requested file. Usually the file that can't be found is one of two files, either the RTF, the temporary RTF file, or the word processor itself. Let's go over some solutions. When anything like this happens that where you can't preview print, I would try each one of these suggestions, and I'll go over the easiest one first. Let's get out of the word processor here, too. And uh, the first one would be setting the word processor. Now, our newest applications auto-detect your word processor, but if you've got an older application, you need to check the set word processor command on the options menu and make sure you're set to Microsoft Word for Windows Preferred. Most other word processors are not sophisticated enough to import the complicated document layouts that we have in the RTF files, and that includes WordPerfect. Therefore, if you don't have Word installed, go with WordPad. I've encountered systems where a, a trial or a student version of Word actually installed in a non-standard location, and our application was unable to find it. Or even when it, find it found it, it couldn't access it. Now, whether you've got a new app or an old one with the send command, if you have Word and still get the error message when you try to preview print, set the word processor to WordPad and try it again. In a new app, like this child support program, I can go to the options menu and choose force WordPad. Here, I'll show you. I'm going to the options menu, force WordPad. Now when I click on the print button, bang, it came up. Wow, that was fast. came up right up in WordPad. And um, if, if it works with WordPad, you've discovered a solution, and you can w use WordPad for previewing and printing. Although Word has more editing capabilities, the difference between using Word and WordPad for printing doesn't matter one iota. Okay, second solution that you can try is another command on the Options menu. It's the default location submenu. And uh, in older applications, we called it the RTF work directory. In later applications, we referred to it as the temp or temporary folder. In any case, it's the folder or directory where the application creates and stores the temporary RTF file that I mentioned a moment ago. If it's not clear to you which default location we're talking about, check the application's related help topic. That'll usually help. Um, by default, the path is usually something like C colon backslash puritus backslash program name backslash temp and uh, I'll show you in the child support application I'm going to options default locations I'm choosing uh, I, w I would normally choose uh, temporary work files or something of that nature in here it's called send the RTF files I'll click there and we see that it's set to C puritus ROCSG 10 temp There are two things to examine in this context. First, the location that you're set to, it must exist. And uh, here, of course, it does exist because we're, we, we've picked it out and we can see that it exists. And second, though, even if the location exists, make sure that you and the application have the right to save files in that location. You could investigate folder permissions by going to the Properties dialog, I'll try that right now. I'll see if I can do that right in the Save As dialog. Let's go to, uh, oh, here, we can go up here. Let's go to Puritus folder, and I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to select Properties, and in the Security tab, we see that there are all these different groups or users have uh, access in, in one way or another and that the for everyone we have full control allowed and that means that the user can read and write and the application can read and write in that particular Puritus folder and its subfolders. 
So that's the way you can check those permissions. And I won't get into changing permissions, but if you that, that, that would be one thing to try. And if you don't know how to do that, call on somebody that does know how to do it. Uh, another thing you can do is to test the location is try opening WordPad and see if you can save a test file in that target location. Okay, third thing to try. Not all users or administrators have the necessary rights to start up the program in, in an administrative uh, environment. So try this. I'm going to turn the program off. And now instead of like I would normally double click on the icon, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to select run as administrator. It is going to give me uh, the user account control warning where I'm going to click on yes, go ahead. And now the program is running as an administrator. Uh, you may say, well, I am an administrator. Well, that's true, but even administrators have limits on installation rights and things like that, so I would say try it anyway. Now, the fourth and last thing is a, another security issue. Applications that start other applications can, on some systems, cause your security software to interfere or preclude this behavior. Because our child support app is trying to start up the word processor when you attempt to print, you may need to look into this issue. You can try two things. Number one, I call it jump starting Word, and that is start Word and leave it open and minimized. I'm going to do that right now. Word is not running. I'm going to click on it. I got a quick icon there. Bang, it's up real fast. Boy, computer's in a good mood today. It's up real fast. Um, there's no document open right now. It's just a blank document. And, um, and actually, if there was a document open, it really wouldn't make any difference anyway. But I've got it all. I've got Word open. I'm going to minimize it. And now I'm going to try printing. And of course, I wasn't having a problem in the first place. But now what's going to happen is that the reason this test may solve the problem is because the application doesn't need to start up Word to send it a document. Word's already started. If it works, you can either make sure you have Word started every time you print, or you can create an exclusion in your security software's configuration settings that allows it to do so. Another test, and this is just a test, is to disable your antivirus. Most, if not all, antivirus software allows you to disable it either temporarily or indefinitely. Usually you do that down in the lower right hand. We've got a Vira here. Look in the lower right. I'm going to click on that. No, I'm not. Let me, let me get back out of that. I'm going to right click on it and there we go. You see that enable real-time protection is checked. If I were to click there and remove the check mark, that would actually turn uh, a virus antivirus off and then I could work and, and try to see if it works uh, to print and preview, then I know that that's what it was. It was the antivirus. And again, you're going to have to create an exception. You got to go into your antivirus software and, and, and figure out what your what configuration parameter you need to adjust and I'm not going to get into that because there's so many different settings there's so many different antivirus and malware programs that does, there's no point in doing it anyway it, hey it's that time again I've covered a, a few things that you can do if you're having trouble printing and previewing through your word processor and I'm pretty sure that one of these solutions will solve your problem finally before I go if you're interested in law office tips like these in this video or the ones that we put in our annual hard copy issue of Law Office Computing magazine I'll mention that there's a book called the best of Law Office Computing it's got all the best tips from years of back issues so uh, I'm sure you'll find the book entertaining and the tips and the use and the hints useful you can get the ebook at Amazon for only nine dollars and the paperback for only twelve ninety nine and with that I thank you for visiting our YouTube channel and I hope you visit again. Until then, thanks for watching.